Hey friends, so today what we're going to do, we are going to learn how to create a birch tree forest at a sunrise or sunset, that's your choice, using watercolors. Now you're going to need a few things. You are going to need a piece of watercolor paper. You're going to also need some blue painter's tape. You can have different sizes if you want to. I would also suggest a pair of scissors because that's what we're going to use in here. Paint brushes of different sizes. I have some flat brushes, I have some round brushes, and I have some little tiny teeny detail brushes. A cup of water. Watercolor paints. Now, if you don't have my kind of watercolor paints, that's totally fine. You can use any kind of watercolor paints. And some paper towels just in case you mess up. So I hope you go gather those things because we're going to make a beautiful birch tree forest. Okay friends, so now what we're going to do is we are going to be starting off with a couple of different materials. We are going to need our watercolor paper. Now my watercolor paper is kind of thick, okay? The thicker the watercolor paper is, the um, that means it's not going to curl as much. If you have really thin paper, that's fine. You can still do this. But um, the thicker it is, the better it's going to be for what we're going to do. Now, I have a couple different blue scotter, uh, scotch painter's tape. And the first thing I'm going to do, no matter if I have thin tape or thin paper or thick paper, is I am going to tape around the edges of my painting and I'm going to create a little border. This is also going to help me when my paper wants to curl, it's not going to curl as much. So the only thing with scotch blue is you can't really see your ed the edges when you line this up, but you can lay this down, rip off four pieces that go along the edge of your paper. This is just good practice for um, the future if you ever want to do this to other paintings. This is how to create a really great border by using watercolors. And so I'm just rolling my paper, tearing off some pieces, and creating a nice little border here. I'm trying to make it as even as possible, but again, if it's not perfect, no big deal. That's okay. Now, once I've done this, now it's going to be time for us to create our trees. Now that's what we're going to start with. Of all things, we are going to create our trees. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to be taping where I want my trees to be on here. Now to do that, you have to kind of see where your um, trees are going to be. Now if you want to, we're not going to do too many trees, but you can do as many as you want to. So if you want to have four trees, you can lay out your little paint brushes like this if you want them perfectly spaced. Or here, I've got these little guys handy. If you want more trees, you can kind of, maybe you want these two to be close and these two might be overlapping like this. You can kind of plan out where you want your trees to be just by placing some paint brushes or something like that on here so you can see it beforehand, before we tape it. Now, if you know where you want your trees to be and you've kind of played with your composition, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking my scissors and my tape. And if you have thin tape, you can use thin tape. And there's even thinner pieces than this. I just don't have very much of this, but we can start with this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my tape. And I'm going to be taping lines going from the top to the bottom. And I don't want it to be perfectly straight up and down. So there's going to be one tree. Now, I want you to notice something. Is this too perfect of a line? Like our trees, our birch trees, don't tend to be this perfectly straight on both sides. So what you can do, you can take another piece, same length, and you can overlap it just like this. And I'm going to get it skinnier and line it up at the top here. And I'm just kind of bringing out the edge that way so I can create a base for it. So you can mess with that and create a base so that it gets skinnier towards the top because the bottom of our trees have a trunk, so they tend to be a little bit wider. Now, what if you don't like how wide this tree is? What if this is too wide for you? Maybe you don't like how wide it is. That's fine. We have a solution for that, and this is all the tape you have. Oh, no. 
you don't like how wide this tree is, we can fix that. All right, so I've got two trees here. I'm placing that down. Notice that I'm kind of pressing on my paper to get the edges there. Okay. Now let's, whoops, that's all that tape was. Now, fine. What I'm going to do is that's what my scissors are for. That's exactly what my scissors are for. So I'm going to take this little guy right here. I'm going to stick that edge right on there. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut my tape. And now, you don't even have to use two pieces of tape. You can cut it as long or as skinny as you want to. You can cut it as skinny as you want to. Or you can cut it real wide. So you see how skinny you can make this? Alright, let's see if that will fit. And remember, if you don't like it, totally fine. See, that might be too skinny, but I'm not too worried about that. That might be actually pretty good, a nice skinny tree, but maybe you don't like that. You can just cut another piece from your tape. And you can overlap it until you are really good and happy with this. Now tape is obviously not the most ideal thing for cutting, but that's okay. That's okay. We adapt and overcome with our pieces. Okay. So now, I'm going to take this guy. That's actually a much better piece. Right there. I'm going to make that overlap. Whoop, just like so. Now be careful. If you have little edges like that, you'll want to avoid having those. I'm going to leave that for the time being. I'm going to get a couple more pieces. All right, and I, see how I'm kind of just taking my tape? I'm kind of taping it to the top here so that it doesn't want to stick all over my desk. I can do that as well. Taking my tape. I'm not worried about the bottoms or the tops. We are not even worrying about the tops of our trees today. All right, turning that off. And let's see, where should I want this little guy? Maybe I want this one. You can overlap it like that if you want to. I'm not entirely sure that's what I want to do there. Okay. Now, notice that the tops and the bottoms of my trees are both touching the edges of my piece. All right. Now, one thing I am going to add is I'm going to add a couple branches that branch off. I'm going to make a couple Y's off of my trees. And the way that I'm going to do that is the same exact way that I've done everything else. I'm going to cut a piece of my tape. And the tape is really important, friends, so make sure you are doing this. The tape is really important, but if you don't want to do the tape, you obviously don't have to, but for my technique today, we are going to be doing that. So notice how I'm putting my Y off of my branch there. And I'm going to do another one. I'm going to take that same tape. Maybe I'll do it on one of my skinnier trees. Do it on one of my skinnier trees over here. Whoop. All right. Keeping it skinny. You don't want your branch to be wider than your tree, though, okay? You don't want your branch to be wider than your tree. All right. And I'm going to stick that guy going right about there. Oops. Let me realign that. The best thing about this painter's tape is it's very forgiving. It's a very forgiving one. Okay. Now, you can add, add, add a bunch more trees if you want to. That is entirely up to you. But I'm going to stop right there for my example. You can add as many trees, make them super skinny, make them really wide. Entirely your choice. Um, but what I'm going to do next, and if you want to, to pause me, or anything like that, you totally can. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do my horizon line. Now, our horizon line is the line that goes. It separates the ground from the sky. Now, you can do just a straight line like this, or you can do exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to kind of cut my tape in half and try and decide where the tops and the bottom, like where it might be a little hilly. Now, look, I can move my horizon line up if I want to, or I can move it down all the way down here. And I, all this space down here is going to be left white, okay? So I want you to kind of play with your composition. Do you want your horizon line to be there, right in the middle? Do you want it to be up high? Depends on where you want yours to be. 
That's entirely your choice. Now I'm going to cut my horizon line. I'm going to cut my horizon line. I'm going to make my little hills going up and down, going up and down. Alright, and my last little guy. Okay. Now, if you don't like your horizon line, that's totally fine. You can take you can take a new piece of tape and try again, or you can layer up your pieces of tape. Alright, now, you can see how I kind of have some hills here. You kind of see how I have some hills? Okay, now decide where you want it to be. Up here, down here. I'm going to choose right about here, and you can kind of angle it that way if it's on a hill. That could be fun. Maybe that way. I might do a little bit like this. Okay. Kind of like where my composition is going. Now, down here, I'm leaving it entirely alone. This line right here is my horizon line. And all this up here, this white space up here, is going to be my sky. Now, what I'm looking at is my sky going... It's like my sun is going to be setting. And you can decide where you want your sun to be. Do you want it over here in this corner? Do you want it up here in the sky? It's still daytime. I'm going to set my sun right about here because where I'm looking at it is right about there. Now, here is where our colors are going to come in handy. Now, your color, your watercolors might be a lot more simpler than mine. The Crayola brand is a great brand, but it has a lot less colors than this particular one. All right. And to make watercolors work, you need water. So I have my cup of water, and I'm going to set that just up here. You might not be able to see it. Let's see if I can unbox it. Okay. 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 Right there. Alrighty. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my watercolors. Typically we don't like to set these things on here. And I will move these right like this. Now, the colors I'm going to start with are my yellow colors. My warm colors. Now, if you don't have a yellow exactly my color, totally fine. You can use any other kind of yellow that you want to. I'm probably going to be using in this area. Now, almost all watercolors come with a lid. Now, I've used mine before, so there's marks on it, but this area, you can mix your very own colors. So if you don't like how yellow yours is, you can add some red to it, make it a little bit warmer, or you can make it even greener if you want to add green or blue to it. That's entirely your choice. Now. To do this, I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water. I'm going to be mixing my yellow right there in the lid. And then I'm going to start touching my watercolors to make it nice and wet so that I can put that onto my painting. So I notice I keep putting it in the water, putting it over here. I want to get that nice color. Now, I don't particularly like how lemon yellow this color is. You might like it. I'm going to add a little bit of this darker yellow right here, a little bit darker yellow. Make it warm it up just a tad. I could even put a little bit of yet orange in there if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it just right like that. Okay. Now, I've gone and I've added that. Now, remember, I'm going to start with my sun. I'm going to start with my sun. And I'm going to be painting right on top of this. I'm not worried about this tape right here. I'm going to paint right on top of my trees. So you ready? Let's start painting. And there's no wrong answer for this. So I'm going to do like this little an N right here. I'm going to do an N. And if you don't like how dark that is or light that is, you can darken it up by adding some more color to it. Now I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water. I'm going to get a little bit of that. I'm kind of just lightening up that and I'm going to do a little bit more around it. And I'm going to get this bleeding type of effect. Okay, now I'm going to clean off my brush. The next color I'm going to do is kind of a pinkish color. Kind of a pinkish color. If you don't want your sunset to be a pinkish color, totally fine. Alright, I'm not totally happy with that color right there. So I'm going to mix maybe a little bit of this kind of color right here. There we go. Nope, oh, got into my little other color there. That's fine. Alright, now I'm going to add that right here. And notice I'm kind of keeping that end shape as I go around. And since these watercolors are wet, they are going to bleed into each other. That's called wet on wet. Wet on wet painting technique right there. If you want to add a little bit more to it, you can. I'm going to be filling up that sky. Leave this area alone. Leave that white. And I'm just kind of taking a little bit from here. 
Adding a little bit of darkness there. All right. Now I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. I'm going to spread that out. Now, at this point, I want to darken up my sky. So to darken up my sky, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my bluish and purplish colors. Now, they're on the other side of my, my, my thing. But I'm going to go into this kind of colors over here. And so I've got bluish purples. So I'm going to clean off my paintbrush really good. And I have my paper towels right here. And I like to just wipe them off right here. And I'm going to get those bluish purples. It's not quite the color I want there. Add a little bit more purple to it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So a little bit of that. Oops, too blue. Okay. That's better. Add a little bit more water to it. Now, I'm going to start to go around it, and they're going to bleed into each other. And remember, my paper is very thick, so if your paper is bending, that happens a lot, okay? That, man, that happens a lot. So I'm just going to fill up the rest of my sky with this color. And if you want to add another color, you can. That's no problem. If you want to go for a dark, dark blue, you can. And actually, I'm going to add a little bit more of that blue in here and go up into that corner. So notice, I'm going to go up into these corners. I'm kind of painting and keeping with that arch shape that I've been doing. Keeping with that arch shape. I'm keeping that color going. I want to add plenty of colors here, friends. And keep out of this area. You don't want to go there. So I'm just, and this is a flat brush, by the way. This is a flat brush that I'm using. If you don't have a flat brush, you can do it with any kind of brush you've got. Watercolors are very forgiving that way, especially if you have some decent paper and it's nice and wet. It will be very forgiving. Okay, so I'm going around and I'm adding some darkness to the edges. Now I'm not painting within here. I'm not painting in here. I'm staying away from that and letting that do its magic. The less you can touch that right now, the better off you're going to be. I am just going right here in the corners, making that super dark like it should be if the sun was setting and you're thinking of a sunset or a sunrise for that matter. A lot of times we don't know the difference. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my brush, slide that to the side, and we are going to take a short little break here. Okay, now that our paper has kind of dried a little bit. Now what we're going to do, but it's not all the way dry. I'm not too worried if it's not all the way dry. Is I'm going to start to remove some of this tape on top here. We need to remove the horizon line first because that's on top. Now notice that this tape has blocked off the paint from getting to our piece. Now we're all done with this tape so you can kind of slide it to the side. And I'm going to start to pick off some of this other tape here. Now, notice that little bleed mark? That's okay. Don't worry about it. We are going to turn that into a shadow or something. We'll do something fun with that. And if you wait for it to be dry all the way, that's fine. You can completely wait till it's 100% dry. That is fine. I'm not worried about these tiny little bleed marks because the whole basis of our tree is pretty much filled up. All right. We are getting all this little tape off of here. The next part is going to be how far down do your trees go? That's the next decision you're going to have to make for our art piece. If I can get this last little piece of tape off, we're going to be good to go. All right. I'm going to ball that up, throw it all away, and we're going to be good to go. We're going to be excellently good to go. All right. Now, when I'm looking at this, when I'm looking at this, I am trying to decide, oh, how far down do these trees really go? Do they go right to here? Like at this tree, you see this line? That's what we're really starting to look at. Is this line coming down? And does it go to here? Does it go to here? That's what we have to decide. Does it stop right here? How far down does it go? Now when I'm looking at this, I feel like this tree is closer. And this is one thing that you guys can look at. If your tree is a bigger um, in this kind of area, and the width of it, that means it might be sitting closer to you. Therefore, it will sit further down on the page. And like this tree or that tree are a bit skinnier, that means you can't see them as well and they're a little bit further away. So they might sit up a little bit higher 
to the horizon line, making it look further away. So that's just a little suggestion. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. All right, now I'm going to be using this brush to start. I might switch to this one. Um, depends. This one is a round brush and this one is a flat brush, but it's just a little bit smaller than the one we used to do this guy. Excuse me, I got the hiccups now. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up my palette from earlier because I no longer want those colors. So I'm just going to take my little napkin here, wet it a little bit, and wipe up my palette. Okay, and dry it off a little bit, and that's all gone. I'm not going to be able to have that mixture in there any longer. So when I'm looking at my colors, when I'm looking at my colors, remember this is a birch tree forest. It's a birch tree forest. So what colors are a birch tree? They're white. They are white. And therefore, um, they're hard to, to paint, but not too hard because they also have a little bit of brown and a little bit of black in there. And so we're going to kind of pick those colors. We're going to pick a darker brown for the basis of this. So when I'm looking at my palette, that will be this area for my palette. It might not be yours. And if only you only have brown and you only have black, guess what you can do? You can mix those colors, and that's what I'm going to do, even though I have like a darkest brown. Okay, so I'll take this guy, and the one I'm going to probably start with is over here. I'm going to start with that one, just because I can. So I'm going to take my water, get my water in there, and I'm going to start to get my colors here. Sometimes it takes a second. Using my black. Okay, so I've got black there. Cleaning that off. I'm going to get some of my brown. And I'm going to mix those together. Alright, good to go. Now, I don't want to start off too strong when I do this. So I've got my color mixed right here. I don't want to start off too strong. I'm going to start to paint these little areas, these little marks. Okay, now remember, this birch tree is wider, therefore it's going to come down a little bit further. And notice, I'm going to kind of skirt along the edge. I'm not touching the sky yet. I'm getting close to it. Okay. Skirt along the edge. Now, one thing I want to talk about before we get too far ahead. My sun is right here. The shadows of this are going to be directly behind it. So I'm going to be able to see a little bit of the light coming through on that sun on the edges here. Okay, and a lot of the shadow is actually going to be right here in the middle of my tree. It's going to be right there in the middle. But I still want to add these marks for my birch tree. I want to add some of these marks. I'm going to have them go all the way up. All the way up. Okay, and I'm going to get to some of the shadowing here in a second. I'm just kind of defining some of these areas. I'm kind of doing arches here. And I'm kind of defining the bottom of this. That's where the bottom of my birch tree is going to be. Alright, next one over going to be this guy. It's one a little bit smaller. I'm going to make the, the edge of it a little bit higher. And make the edge of that one right there. Adding them all the way. I'm doing vertical lines and horizontal lines and curved and diagonals. Not getting too carried away here yet. And remember, this is dry just a tad. Just enough for me to not be too scared for it to bleed into it if I accidentally touch it because it's not super wet anymore. Okay? And notice there's no rhyme or reason for how I'm doing these marks. This one's also going to sit up a little on the high side. It's going to sit up really high, kind of right about here, kind of on the same level as this one. Now this one has the little branch that kind of comes off of it. So look, I'm going to draw that branch coming off of right there, just like that. And so this is, remember, that's where my little shadows are going to be. I'm going to be painting my shadows shortly. Right now I'm just kind of defining the edges of my trees, but I'm not going crazy with it. I'm not painting a ton of marks here. I'm not painting the whole thing brown, because these are not brown trees. These are typically white trees. Alright, now this one's going to sit further down. I'm going to decide eh, right about here. See how I'm kind of continuing that line? It's going to come down right about in here. Alright. And then this one has a branch as well. This one has a branch as well. I need a little bit more paint right there. Right. 
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to worry about some more of these markings. So where are these shadows going to be? Now, I am thinking, while I let this area dry, I'm going to start to work on the snowy areas a tad, just a little bit. I'm actually going to pick up this one. Now, to paint snow, snow is white. However, to paint it, we're going to use a little bit of blue, a little tiny, tiny bit of purple. Okay? I'll get my colors here, then I get a little bit of my blue, and I'm going to get my, my, light, my lighter sky blue colors, my lighter sky blue colors. And if I don't like it, no worries, I don't have to use it. Okay, I'm getting my sky blue colors, and I'm mixing it. And I'm kind of keeping this on the watery side. So I have lots of water mixed into this because our snow is typically very white and very light. But when we paint it, we're going to use a lot of blues. Now, let's paint the shadows of our trees first. Remember, our sun is right here. Anytime I am painting shadows, the light is coming from right there. Now this tree, look at where it's going to go. When I'm lining up my paintbrush for this one, the shadow is going to be kind of pointing the other way. This one is kind of pointing oops, that way. But this one is right behind it, right here. And this one's over here. It changes directions as I go. Or you can paint it all in the same direction, but that's going to look a little funny. The shadow of the sun right here, notice how it's, it's not really lining up. Okay, so we're going to change the direction. You're going to kind of line up your paintbrush. See how it's kind of coming from that angle? A little bit more. This one's right in front of it. This one's just off to the side of it a little bit. So you're changing the angle as you go. And I'm kind of going down here. Just going around, just like that. Just right there at the edge. And we're going to get a little bit darker here shortly. Right there in front of it. All right, change of directions just a tad. And that's fine. If it's not perfect, I am not worried about that. But we do want to try our best. Going down here at the edge. All right. Now let's paint some of our snow. So I'm going to think of this snow kind of right here. I don't want to paint it on top of the trees. You can paint up to the edge of the trees and then stop. To the edge of the trees and stop here, adding some of that blue, thinking about all these things. You can add little animal tracks if that's something that is interesting to you. You can add that. I'm not going to add that to this particular one today, but you can absolutely add that. And we'll get to painting little tiny branches here shortly. All right, now let's darken it up. Let's add a tiny bit of purple to this. Let's add some purple in here. That will just be fun. I'm going to kind of add it into some of these shadows here. A little bit of purple. Again, I'm using very, very, uh, I'm using a lot of water in here. Okay, I'm going to get some of mine. Now I'm going to kind of go up and skirt along the edge of here. Right along the edge. Just to kind of define some of that. But I'm not going crazy with it. I'm leaving lots of white going along the edge. And you can add lines that kind of cross over your shadows. That's an option you have as well. Okay. Now, pretty happy with that. I'm going to let that dry. Now, kind of the same color scheme we just did here. We're going to put it right here in the middle of our trees. So I'm going to get some of that bluish color, some of that purple. I'm going to add some shadows inside these trees. Mixing up my blues, mixing up a little bit of that purple. All right. And I am not being super direct with it. So I'm kind of adding, and look, I'm painting on top of this. Okay, right here, and I'm adding, keeping lots of this white. Around the edges especially. Around the edges. I'm leaving that a little bit white. Now, if you have a little area that, you know, kind of blood into the sky, you know, kind of cover on top of that. That's fine. This side over here is going to be facing away from that sun just a little bit. I have plenty of white on that side. It's amazing. How a little bit of white makes it still look like a white tree. Now this one I'm putting right in the middle. And now notice, I'm kind of switching onto this side of my tree a little bit because that's where the shadow is going to be. It's going to be opposite of where the sun is. Like 
Need a little bit more of that color here. All right, and then I don't forget these branches also have a little shadow. Going down here to the edge right there, going around. And remember, this is a flat brush that I'm using, and I'm still leaving plenty of my tree white. But I'm not going overboard. Now, I can sit here all day, and I can keep on adding my colors, making a little bit darker, a little bit darker. Okay, and you can do the same. I'm not making everything darker, just little parts of it. Going through, adding little bits. I can go through and I can do my darker bits as well again. If you don't like how light some of your pieces are, you can add, look, I'm going to just do mostly just black here. Mostly just black. And I can go through and I can add a little dark pieces here, kind of highlight some of these. Using the side of my round brush, kind of creating that shadow if you really want to. All right, getting my dark pieces. And remember, this is wet right now, and that's all right. I kind of like that effect of having the wet on wet as well. I'm not doing everything, just little bits here and there. Little bits here and there, need a little bit more there. I'm using my round brush right now. But you can still be using your flat brush, that's fine too. Okay, now, to add some of the details of the little branches coming off, I'm going to use this tiny little detail brush. And I'm going to get some of this black. Now, I do not want to paint on the sky if it is still wet. Don't paint on the sky if it is still wet. Mine is pretty much dry at this moment, but if yours is still wet, don't paint on it yet. Wait until it's very dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a couple little lines that kind of come out, and I make little Y's that come off, little Y's, and I am not going overboard with my Y's. Maybe to do two Y's here, maybe I add another little Y, okay, so I'm just getting, I'm using a black right now, I'm using a black, add a little Y here, don't go crazy with this, a little bit goes a long, long way, now, but you know, trees have multiple branches that come off, and they get skinnier as they kind of go out. They get skinnier as they kind of go out, and I'm just painting basically little wobbly wise. Little wobbly wise. That's the best way to describe what it is that we're doing. Okay. Now, I'm glad that I did this. Notice how I got wider right there, and it's skinnier right there. Guess what? I'm just going to go back in. Make it wider at the at the where it touches the tree. And I can totally fix that. Nobody would be the wiser. And little pieces that come off. Remember, this is kind of winter time. This is a winter scene. This is winter. So there are no leaves right now. There are no leaves at the moment. And oh friends, can you have a branch that goes inside of your thing, of course, but notice, it's going to kind of bleed a little bit if it's not dry all the way, okay, so be aware, be careful, you can add as many as you want, they can have going off the paper like that if you want to, and now it's like your trees are going up off the paper, now, you can add as many as you want to, I'm going to stop there, most important thing that you do is when you are done, sign your beautiful artwork and date it, okay? Great work. Oops, it's still wet down there. That's all right. I'm going to keep on going. That's okay. I hope you guys have had a great time. I hope you guys have had a great time um, making our beautiful artwork. When it is all dry, then you can take the tape up just like so, and you can see how that border is right there. I'm going to let mine dry all the way before I do all that. Enjoy creating. I've had a great time with you. Have fun. Okay, friends, I hope you had a great time making our birch tree forest together, and 
I cannot wait for you guys to frame these beautiful pieces up and enjoy your artwork and keep practicing. Remember, it's okay if it doesn't look like mine. I really want it to look like yours. Keep creating, friends.